came to California in 1954, and that's when Leo was making the Stratocaster. And Leo said, here, take this Strat, it's brand new. I want you to play it and see what you think. So I picked it up, and I learned to play upside down backwards. You know, the knobs were in the way, and so Leo looked at me and he said, son, you're holding it the wrong way. And I said, no, no, here, why? And he started laughing, and he almost fell off that chair. And ever since then, he became like a second father to me. And everything that came out of his mind, I pioneered. I wanted my guitar and amplifier to sound like drums, like Gene Krupa. And in those days, they didn't have that kind of power. So when I would go like that, all of a sudden, too much amperage would go in, they would smoke the speakers and they start burning. They'd actually catch on fire at times. And I'm standing and playing in front of 4,000 people at the Rendezvous Ballroom in Balboa, California. This is where it all started in the early, late 50s. And Leo saw me smoking his amps and he said, now I know what Dick's trying to tell me. Back to the drawing board. And he created the first 85 watt output transformer, peaking 100 watts. So we went to JBL Lansing and said we want a 15 inch speaker with about a 10, 12 pound magnet on the back, put into a, an aluminum alloy cage. We plugged it into what we, he called the Showman amplifier with the 85 watt output transformer, peaking 100 watts. He called it a showman because I used to leap off the stage and end my songs and slide across the floor on my knees. He used to say, Dick, you're such a showman. When I plugged the Stratocaster into that showman, guitar player said, the magazine said, Dick Dale became the father of heavy metal. And the kids called me king of the surf guitar because they loved surfing to the sound. And the sound was like the waves rolling in like that when we would surf. I started off with the sunburst, which Leo gave me. So there's a fellow that wandered, uh, his name was Dave Myers and the Surf Tones. And it, you know, all the bands started going like that, you know, the surf tones, luck tones, up tones, up tones, down tones, side tones, whatever. And he would, he would copy everything that I had. So I used to paint, change the color of my guitar every other day. So he'd come in there as a joke. I had a purple one, I had a black one, I had a white one, I had a red one, I had all... I, if you look at my guitar, it's the only guitar I've ever had, you'll see about 11 coats of paint. So he would go and he'd try to call me, he'd try, Dick, I can't afford to paint my guitar because he had to pay for it. So I was always teasing him. Then one day, my buddy who paints cars, he goes, Dick, why don't I paint a lime gold metal flake? You know, this one, like I paint cars, custom cars. So I said, go for it. And it's been that color ever since. So I started with Beach Party, uh, with Annette and Frankie, and uh, went to a Muscle Beach Party. And I think they didn't, wouldn't come up with enough money or something for the third one, so I didn't do it. And then as the years went by, uh, Annie wanted me back on what they did back to the beach. And that was where Stevie Ray Vaughan, Stevie learned on Dick Dale Records. And, you know, and Stevie thought I was dead, you know, and then he saw me, he goes, whoa, man, he's still kicking. So Stevie and I, what a sweetheart he is, he was. God bless him, and he, uh, and I got a, nominated for a Grammy, you know, for Pipeline. Yeah. 